Hello everybody, Nathan here with uh, another update on the survival sub game and get ready for the shock of your life. Yeah, I know. Not exactly very shocking, is it? Um, but we have all sorts of grass now. All over the place. Like, all over the place. Just insane how much grass there is. Um, they said last week these values definitely need some tweaking. Um, currently, the grass, once it grows to level 5, does turn into... Or is it level 4? I forget how many levels it goes to. But once it gets to max level, it actually does turn into jungle grass. Um, there's a different ABM that controls that, so that happens much less often. But it does still happen. Um, and that I might actually change. I'm not sure if I really like how much that's turning out to be. Or I could just tweak that value a lot. Um, you're probably noticing all of the spots on the ground that are still like locked on dirt. That unfortunately is going to stay that way in this world because of how the changes were implemented. Uh, basically, I did a couple changes. The grass now, instead of growing in everything that's group soil, does just grow on the grassy items. So default dirt with grass, um, because we're using the valley map gen, we have this sandy soil here, this grass will grow on. There is a clayey soil, which I don't think there's any around here, but it'll grow on that as well. I want to say there's one other, I think there's four nodes now that the grass will actually grow on as the grass like this. These nodes, the ones that are like kind of worn down dirt or grass, you know, kind of half white ones, those will now only turn back to grass if the node above them is air. So, this node, because grass is growing on it from before, uh, this grass itself will still grow through the levels because that doesn't make any checks about what's under it. But this block below the grass will never actually turn back into default dirt with grass because there's soil or the grass growing on top of it. Now, if I walk on top of that node to kill the grass, at some point, yes, that'll grow back to being dirt with grass. And then. Uh, the actual grass can grow on top of it. So that's been updated. Um, and now, the reason I actually had to make that change, let me run out to the water here, was because I was out at the out at the lake here one day and I noticed a problem, and you'll still see it here. This probably is not going to go away anytime soon. All of the dirt nodes underwater were growing grass on them which they shouldn't do. So now the dirt only grows grass if the node above it is air. There's also some goblins running around out in the water here. These guys have been updated quite a few times. They still don't attack though. And you can't really do anything with them. They're fun when they're actually underground in caves. So there's some minor changes. Let's uh, take a look at the one new item that has been added. Now this item is not yet complete as of the recording of this video. But I record these videos on Wednesday. It goes live on Friday. So there's a chance when you guys are watching this that this feature will be finished. Alright, so we'll just place... Uh, first off, let me explain what this is. This is a simple snare. Just a basic trap right there's simple snare right click on it bait the trap to catch game uh, I really don't have anything that would make good bait here guess we could throw raw steak in there if we wanted to catch like wolves or something and currently that's all it does it, it doesn't do anything else it just has an inventory slot you can currently dig it with something being in inventory in which case of course you lose whatever it was that was sitting in the inventory there. Uh, that'll be easy to update, fix, remove. Um, but yeah, so we've got the start of Simple Traps. They're going to catch small game here. I'm going to do a couple different styles of traps. I think we'll have just this real basic one. Maybe a snare trap. It's like the stick with the rope hanging down for a noose. That'll be to catch slightly larger animals. 
And then I might do like a large bear trap, which would work for, well, obviously, large animals such as bears. Now, it's actually quite convenient that it's getting dark here, because there's another new addition that I almost forgot about, but just remembered. Now, this is no coding of my own. This is a, another mod that I finally found after seeing this in use on a few servers, and I think a, a couple other sub-games, and for the life of me, I could not figure out what was taking this over and doing this. I stumbled upon it accidentally the other day while I was browsing GitHub. Um, I think it's dark enough that we can do this. Yeah. We have the... I forget what it's called. Walking Light, I think is the name of it. Um, basically, if you're holding a torch, it'll light up your surroundings. Um, unless you're underwater. If you're in water, it doesn't, but it seems to be kind of kind of buggy how that works. See, like, when I'm on those lily pads, it doesn't work. But then I can be at other places in the water, and it looks like it's working under the water. No, it's not, just the way it looks under the water. So, yeah, I don't really know for sure what the deal is. That uses up a little bit more processing power. Because pretty much it's constantly making calculations for lighting. So that uses a little more power, but it is available for those of you that have higher end computers that want to use it. I will make that an option in the config that that can easily be turned on and off. Um, another change I have made, though it isn't working yet, is um, sickness. Pathogen mod has been installed from the get-go. It has never done anything, though. Unfortunately, it still doesn't do anything. However, the code is in place. Do I have that code up? No, I do not. Let me... Because I know you guys want to see the code. Because, come on, who wouldn't? I can just close that. Oh, right. We have... That is the wrong... Wrong, wrong stuff to be looking at. We want to actually be looking at survival mods, foods, meats. Ta da! We have our meats. And we have the table here that gives you the craft item, the description, your health gain, hydration gain, the group, and then chance of getting food poisoning out of 10. Raw meat gives you a 6 of 10 chance. Rotten meat gives you a 10 of 10 chance. And you have a 0 of 10 chance on. Cooked, smoked, salted, and dried meats. And basically, here's the code for it. Um, if chance level, which is uh, a local value here that's a random, 1 to 10, is less than our chance, and our chance is the numbers defined in the end of this table here, then it's supposed to run pathogen infect function influenza single player. And I actually created a new pathogen disease, whatever we want to call it, called food poisoning. I can't get it to work. I uh, asked on the the forum page for it. I haven't gotten a response back yet. That was for about 12 hours ago. So hopefully, either I'll be able to figure this out or somebody who knows can let me know because this would be a cool feature to have. So when you're eating raw meat, you're not just going to take a health loss because it's not really how this works. This is affecting your hunger and your thirst, not directly your health, because that's all overwritten by the HUD mod. So, we'll see. It would be nice if you could get sick from eating raw meat. Uh, a variety of other things I can think of. Dehydration could trigger a disease. Um, so, yeah. That would be a nice feature to add. Like I said, I just got to figure out what's wrong with the code right there uh right here rather so figure that out we will have illness taking place and yes it'll make it much more survival like in other news um do i have this open no i do not let me open it we have not on the forms yet but my web browser from the other window here we are on Trello 
Or should I say, I am on Trello. And I will have the link for this. Of course I'm not signed in. I will have the link for this in the description below. So you'll be able to hop on Trello. And here we go. Um, it is open for public comments. I don't know where that option is. But uh, public, anyone can see this board, but only members can edit. Anybody can comment, though, which uh, I think is just going to be comments on cards, I believe. Not positive, but this is kind of where we'll be keeping things updated. Uh, of course, we'll also have GitHub, so feel free to leave bug requests there. This is kind of like a um, roadmap, more or less, is what this is. So this is things that I'm working on, things I know about. Once I finish things, just drop them right into the done place. So yeah, uh, I've seen a couple of people using Trello. Nobody for my test specifically, but I've seen other people using it for game development. So I'd give it a try, see how it works out. So link for this will be in the description. Um, and soon-ish, gonna be putting the sub game up on the forums. So that link, once I have it, I will give it to you guys. Uh, and then I should mention my website as well, nathansalapat.com. Link for that will be in the description as well. Um, I am starting to work on a couple things there for my test. Um, currently, this is just your page when you click on my test. I am planning on adding a, a sub menu here. So we'll have reviews. Um, what's, what was my other one? My test modding, the series, and then some Let's Plays. And I plan on getting a, a, uh, a form. So if you guys want me to do a review of your sub game or of your mod or a Let's Play of some certain sub game or, you know, it doesn't have to be your mod. If you want a mod review of some mod, drop me a link on this page. Like I said, that'll be coming up in a few weeks. It's not going to be an immediate thing. Drop me a link there, and I will do my best to get those reviews created for you guys. So that's going to be cool. Uh, and that is pretty much it for the updates for this week. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and I will catch you again next week.